In this video, we take a look at how to enable our IAM users to create and manage their own multi-factor authentication to secure access to an AWS account. More specifically, we want to ensure that IAM users are allowed to access an AWS account with only the necessary permissions to set up MFA alone. Only when they've set up and authenticated with MFA will they be allowed to access other AWS services to carry out their job functions. Let us take a look at how to set this up in this hands-on exercise. By now, you understand that the root user is the most privileged user in your AWS account. The root user has access to all of the services on AWS within your AWS account. With multi-factor authentication, you must prove who you are using multiple factors. One, with what you know, and that is your username and password, and two, with what you have, and that is your one-time PIN. So, in our example, we have several groups that need access to various services on AWS. We've got Chris and Nancy, our developers, that require access to Amazon S3. We have our testers, Emma and John, and they need access to EC2 so that they can test out our new application across various instance types. And then we have Tatiana and Chekhov, our database gurus, who need access to Amazon RDS to launch and configure databases. To enforce the principle of least privileges, we want to ensure that our users only have the necessary permissions to perform their specific job roles. In addition, we want to ensure that our users are authenticated with MFA before they can access any of these services. So what we can do is apply another overarching policy to our users. This policy will prohibit all actions unless users have been configured with multi-factor authentication. So even though our database gurus have been granted access to Amazon RDS, they will not be able to access the service unless they have been authenticated with multi-factor authentication. Remember that deny always overrides allow. So even if you have one policy that grants you access to a service, but another one that denies access, then you will not be able to access that service. In our case, unless a specific condition has been met, and that condition is that you need to be authenticated with multi-factor authentication before you can access AWS services you need to work with. The next question is, how do we set up this MFA? Well, we can have our systems administrator, Mike, who has full admin access, configure MFA for our end users. Mike can either request our users to provide access to their smartphones and configure MFA service using an authentication app on those devices. Alternatively, if we were rolling out hardware device tokens, then Mike can pre-configure them and give them out to our end users. This is all okay if we have six or perhaps 20 IAM users. It starts to get really difficult for our friend Mike when you have 200 or even 1,000 IAM users. And it becomes even more difficult when you have IAM users working remotely. Organizations now tend to hire staff globally and remote work has become the norm. For example, in our case with the Vegan Studio, we have Tatiana and Chekhov who work remotely from Moscow, Russia. So for our lab exercise, we know that we want Tatiana and Chekhov to be able to access the Amazon RDS service. Rather than have Mike configure MFA for our database gurus, we can have Tatiana and Chekhov set up their own MFA devices before they can access the services they need to work with. The way we do this is by applying another policy to our database gurus, which prohibits all actions except a few IAM actions that allow our database gurus to change their credentials and manage their own MFA devices on the My Security Credentials page. This way, if Chekhov, for example, logs into the Amazon AWS account and tries to access a service he should be able to work with, but hasn't yet configured MFA, then he will be denied access. Only when he has set up MFA and then logged in with his multi-factor authentication token, will he be able to perform his duties on the AWS account. Okay, so let's take a look at the steps required to complete this hands-on lab exercise. You're gonna need some prerequisites first. Ensure that in your AWS account, you've configured a group, let's call it the DBA group, added a couple of users, and attached the RDS full access policy to the group. Next, as part of step one, we'll be creating a policy to enforce MFA sign-in. Now I've included a sample policy for you in the resources section of this video, which will ensure that users need to first configure MFA before they can access any AWS service. In step two, you need to attach the policy to your DBA users group. And then in step three, you'll be testing your users access. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sample policy first, and then we'll jump on into the AWS management console. Okay, so here is a copy of the policy template that we've provided you in the resources section of this video. 
when this policy document is attached to a particular user, that user is able to log into the AWS account, go to the My Securities page, and perform several actions. Some of those actions include the ability to change their password, set up their own access keys, set up their own signing certificates, and SSH public keys. Now, at this point, this particular policy document has several allow statements, and these allow the user to perform these specific actions. However, we want to make sure that most of these actions are only permitted if the user is configured to log in with MFA and if the user has logged in with multi-factor authentication. So in addition to these allow statements, what we are actually going to do is add a deny statement as well. And if we scroll a little bit further down, there it is. You'll see that we've applied a deny statement to this policy document. So let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. So the effect is set to deny and the resources is a wildcard, which means we are actually denying everything. OK, so even though we have set a number of different allow statements above, like the ability to change your password, create your own access keys, etc., we are contradicting that with a deny statement over here. We're saying that we're denying absolutely everything with this resource set to a wildcard to an asterisk as long as multi-factor authentication present is set to false. So as long as you have not logged in with multi-factor authentication, then you're going to be denied absolutely everything. Except, and that's where the power of the not action statement comes in. Except for these listed actions. So except for the ability to create a virtual MFA device, enable your MFA device, list your devices, and resync your devices if necessary, Everything else is denied. Hopefully, you're beginning to then appreciate how this statement block works. We're denying absolutely everything as long as you're not authenticated with multi-factor authentication except for the actions listed in the not action segment. Okay, So except for these actions, everything else is denied. And this is how we're going to enforce the fact that the user who logs on with this particular policy attached to them is only going to be able to set up MFA and only when they set up MFA when they've logged in with multi-factor authentication where as a result of logging in with multi-factor authentication we've got a true will we be able to perform the other actions above. In addition with regards to our friend Tatiana and Chekhov they've got another policy document applied to their group and that is the ability to work with Amazon RDS. They will be able to work with Amazon RDS, set up databases, configure databases, etc., as long as multi-factor authentication present is not false, as long as they've logged in with multi-factor authentication. I want to highlight another key feature here of this policy template. So let's take the example of the statement which allows you to change your own password. So the effect is set to allow the actions are the ability to change password, get user, etc. What you will notice is that we've set the resource to a variable, specifically the AWS username variable. Okay, So we have not actually put in Tatiana's user ID in there. And this is very, very crucial. Um, rather than restrict access for a particular policy document to one specific user, or in the worst case scenario, you've got 200 users and you have to list all those usernames in there, we've actually used a variable over here to say that when you log in with your username, this particular policy document can apply to you. So we're using variables instead of actually specifying our users themselves. So this is another powerful feature of IAM policies. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this template to create a new policy. And then we'll apply this policy to our database administrators group so that we can enforce Tatiana and Chekhov to configure MFA before they can do anything in their account. Okay, so we're in our management account and I want to make a quick note of my account ID because we'll be using this account ID in order to log in as one of our database gurus. So let me just copy that account ID and save that in a notepad document for a second. There it is. Okay, and let's go into IAM. Now I've already created my user groups and my users. So I want to show you what that is. Okay, so if we click on users, you will see that I've already got my users Chekhov and Tatiana who are our database administrators already set up. If we go into user groups and take a look at the actual DBA group, okay, there it is. You will see that currently it has some permissions assigned. 
Okay, and specifically, it's got the Amazon RDS full access permission assigned. So our users check off and Tatiana can access Amazon RDS to configure, set up databases, etc. Now, we're going to be creating another policy which will enforce MFA as a prerequisite before they can actually access RDS. So the next step is to click on policies. And then click on create policy. Click on the JSON tab. And in this tab, go ahead and paste in a copy of the policy template that was supplied in the resources section of this video. Okay, so that's that one over there that we had a look at earlier. This policy will enforce the fact that the only actions that are permitted if you have not authenticated with MFA are these ones here, the ones to enable you to set up multi-factor authentication for your account. So go ahead, click next for tags. Click add a tag and we'll give it a name. And we'll call this one force MFA. Click next for review and then just give it a policy name of force MFA as well. You can give it a description if you like and then go all the way down and click create policy. Okay, so force MFA policy has been created. The next thing to do is you want to add it to your users group. So click on user groups and click on DBAs and then click on permissions and we're going to attach this policy to the database administrators group. So click on add permissions, click attach policy, and there's the force MFA policy there. Go ahead and click add permissions. Okay, so now the permission that forces MFA, which is a customer managed AWS policy, is now attached to this particular group which means that Tatiana and Chekhov would need to authenticate with MFA before they can do all of the other stuff that they would like to do. And if they don't authenticate with MFA, the only thing they can do is set up MFA. So we're gonna test that next. So let's go ahead and first of all, um, log out from this account. And we're gonna log in as Tatiana this time. So if you remember, we need to actually provide the account ID for the account that we are logging into when you log in as an IAM user. And I had saved the account ID in a notepad document. Let me just bring that up. Just going to copy that and then paste it into there. Okay, there it is. And then click next. And we're going to log in as Tatiana and put in her password and sign in. So as you can see, we are able to sign in as Tatiana. Okay, we weren't prompted for the MFA yet because obviously we haven't configured MFA. And Tatiana should be able to access Amazon RDS because she's a member of a group called DBAs. Okay, so if we go into RDS, and click on create database, you will see we're getting an error. Okay, it says that Tatiana is not authorized to perform RDS described DBE engine versions with an explicit deny. Okay, so that is the explicit deny from the policy force MFA that's attached to the group that she's a member of. So the only thing that Tatiana can do is configure MFA. So what she can do is click on her account name just there and go down to my security credentials. Okay, and in my security credentials, you will see that she has um, some restricted access to certain services. Um, if we try and change her password, and let's put in her old password. And I'll put in a new password as well. And click change password. Okay, so we don't have permissions to change the password either. Okay, so the policy is restricting us from working with our my security credentials page, except for setting up MFA. So let's cancel out of that. Let's go down and set up MFA. So we're going to click on assign MFA device. And we are going to be setting up a virtual MFA device. And for this, you're going to need a smartphone, either an iPhone or an Android. Now, before you actually do this, you will need to download and install an authentication app like Google Authenticator, which you can find in the Apple Play Store or in the Google Play Store. So if you do that first, get your phone, Download and install Google Authenticator before you click on the continue button next. Once you've installed the Google Authenticator app, go ahead and launch it on your phone. And once you've launched the Google Authenticator app on your phone, you need to click on the plus sign within the app and then click scan or QR code. Okay. So at this point, the Google Authenticator app is looking for a QR code to scan. On your screen in the AWS Management Console, go ahead and click continue. 
and you're provided with your QR code. If you click on show QR code, scan the QR code onto your Google Authenticator app on your phone. Okay, and on your phone, you're going to be provided with one time password pin numbers, and these will be generated every 30 seconds roughly. Okay, so what you need to do is as a new pin comes up, okay, you have a short period of time in which to input that pin number as MFA code one. So go ahead and do that first. So whatever the first pin is, go ahead and put that in. So I'm going to put mine in. And then I'm going to wait for the second code to come up. And the second code is 238453. And then I'll click assign MFA. At this point, we have configured Tatiana's account with an MFA device that's associated with the Google Authenticator app on your phone. So go ahead and click close. Okay. And that is the assigned MFA device. Okay. So we can test this out now. Let's go ahead and log out from this account. Okay. And log back in as Tatiana. So we're going to click log back in. We need to provide the account ID. Username is Tatiana. And then obviously the password. Click sign in. And you will be prompted for an MFA code. So go ahead and look at your Google Authenticator app. Check what the next MFA code is for Tatiana. Okay, and click Submit. And if all worked well, then you should be logged in as Tatiana. And there we are. Okay, so let's test out whether this has worked. So I'm going to go back into my My Security Credentials page. And this time, you can see that I have a bit more of an access, so I can actually go ahead and change my password perhaps. Let's try that out. Click change password. Yep, and that worked, so I was able to change my password. What about what I'm really supposed to be doing? So that is being able to create and set up databases. So let's take a look at that. Go into RDS. Okay, so I'm on the RDS dashboard. I can click create database and let's see whether we get any errors. No, we're good. We are actually able to now work with our RDS. I can select uh, MySQL database. Yeah, I can make changes to which environment I'm trying to create. And yep, all looks good. So I'm actually able to work with the RDS database console. So hopefully you can now see that because I'm authenticated with the MFA, I'm able to carry out all the other actions permitted by all the other policies associated with my account. So I've got the full RDS access associated with my group, the database administrators group, and I'm a member of that group, or rather Tatiana is a member of that group, and she's able to now work with her databases. Fantastic. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next. Thank you.